This is the four card problem, which is an interesting question in logic and deals with learning and understanding the concept of the conditional in logic. And the question starts off here. Suppose each card below has a number on one side and a letter on the other. So that's a given. We assume one side of the card has a letter and the other side has a number. And that's an assumption that we'll take to be true. Which of these cards must be turned over to reveal the other side, logically speaking, strictly by logic, if we want to know whether the statement below is true or false? So the statement that we're checking to see, is this really in fact true? The question is, which cards do you have to flip to confirm whether or not this is actually true? The statement here, a conditional, it says, if there is a vowel on one side, then there is an even number on the other side. So which of these cards would you have to flip logically at a minimum? Which ones are required to flip to confirm or to check whether or not that's actually true? So think about that for a second and then I'll show you the answer. Well, the answer is that you need to flip this card and you need to flip this card in order to confirm, and you don't have to flip the other two. And I'm gonna take some more time to go through very carefully explaining logically why that is. But if you got that without ever seeing this question before, right away, that's really impressive. Um, of course, many people would think that you need to check the card with the A because it is a vowel and you wanna see if there's an even on the other, and that's true, you do need to flip this guy. Right. But, and we don't have to flip this one because D is not a vowel, so you can pass right by that. Many people might think you'd have to flip this one because it's a four and you want to see if there's a vowel on the other, but it doesn't say if there's an even on one side, there's a vowel on the other. We're not checking that. So it's perfectly possible that if there is a consonant on one side, there's an even on the other, and that's just something different. So we're not checking the converse, so to speak. We're not checking to see if there's an even on one side, there's a vowel on the other. You don't have to check that. You don't have to flip the four, but you do have to flip that card with the seven because there could be a vowel on the other side, which would contradict the statement. And so, yeah, we got to flip the A and the seven. Now, um, let me just maybe right here just make a comment about is this very abstract i think it's abstract but on the other hand i mean these are concrete cards you can imagine right it's just as i mean it's it's not terribly abstract but it seems like there's something abstract about the reasoning here that makes it kind of difficult and let me just compare with uh, an example that i think is just as abstract in some sense because, you know, these are just pictures. Suppose the same four cards instead showed a person's age and what they were drinking at a party. And which cards would you have to flip now, logically speaking, um, to check if the following statement is true, to determine if the following statement is true? The, 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 the conditional that we're checking to see if it's true is if a person is drinking an alcoholic beverage, then they are of legal drinking age. Okay, so just take a couple of seconds to think about that. Which ones do you have to flip to check if this is true? Well, this is much easier, right? You got to flip this one because that's an alcoholic beverage. You got to see if they're actually of age. Uh, you don't really have to check uh, the person that's drinking the soda. That doesn't matter what their age is. Uh, we don't have to check the person that's 25. Um, it doesn't say if they're of legal drinking age, then they have an alcoholic beverage. So we don't have to check that one either. But you do have to check this person who's 16 to see what they're drinking. So isn't it interesting that that's exactly the same logic and seems so much easier? And I wonder, is it really just simply because it is um, more concrete I mean, in fact, in some ways, this is more abstract because people aren't cards, and these are still just images on the screen. They're just conceptual. It seems to me just as concrete as the other one in some ways, but clearly in other ways, this is much easier. Why is that? I just wonder, what is it? It's sort of an interesting part of the human psychology, I think, 
that makes this question easy to decide which ones you flip versus the one that we had just looked at here, it was harder to decide logically which ones do you have to flip. And yet, in both of these examples, the logic is exactly the same. We flip exactly the same cards for exactly the same reason. So let's look a little bit more carefully at the rules of the logic of conditionals and you can see sort of a little bit more precisely why it does play out this way in both cases. So as we analyze that conditional, if there's a vowel on one side, then there's an even on the other. That's a conditional of the form if P then Q. P is called the antecedent and Q is called the consequent. And um, already in a different video done the truth table for the conditional and the truth table for the equivalent contrapositive and these truth tables for both the given statement and the contrapositive, they're the same, precisely the same value in every case. So both P and Q could be true. P could be true, Q false, maybe P is false, but Q is true, or possibly it's the P, the antecedent that's false, and also uh, the consequent that's false. So in all those cases, this is the truth value. And in both of these, uh, these are the same truth value. Both the given statement and the contrapositive have the same truth value in every single possible case. Um, and what's significant right now is that the only time a conditional and the equivalent contrapositive would be false is in this one case where the, um, the, um, the statement P is true and Q is false. So let's look at that particular situation Let's take uh, the original given statement first. Suppose that there was a vowel on one side and there um, isn't an even on the other. So an even on the other side is false. Well, that really meant that I had to flip this card because there's a vowel on one side. Um, and we'd have to check to see if there's actually an even on the other, and that's really not surprising, and pretty much everybody recognizes that that one has to be flipped. Now, this one, you don't have to flip that because it's not a vowel. And so um, it doesn't matter whether the statement P is false, the statement would still be true. The statement, the given statement is true no matter what is on the other side if the first part of the conditional isn't met. If the antecedent is false, then it doesn't matter whether there's an even on the other side or not. The statement is true. We don't have to check the for because it's basically looking at these two cases. If there's an even on one side, it's either of these cases where there's an even on one side is true. And in both of them, it doesn't really matter if there's a vowel on the other side or not. And again, we aren't checking to see whether if there's an even on one side, there's a vowel on the other. We're not checking that. We're not checking the converse. So it doesn't matter. If this part comes out true, it doesn't really matter whether there was a vowel or not on the other side. If there's an even on one side, it's like these two cases. And it doesn't matter whether there's a vowel on the other side. The statement is true in both of those cases. And finally, the reason why we flipped that seven, I think, the way that I like to think of it is that you're basically just checking the contrapositive to see if the contrapositive is true. And the contrapositive is the same as the given statement. And so what are we really checking here with the contrapositive? I mean, the reason I refer to the contrapositive when justifying that you have to flip this one is because as you read the contrapositive, I have it written here. If there is not an even on one side, then there is not a vowel on the other. So you see it's pretty clear now, we do not have an even on this side, so we have to check whether or not there is not a vowel on the other. And so just specifically, I refer to an equivalent logical statement, the contrapositive, as one of the ways that I explain this, uh, but let me go on. I mean, what's happening here is that we ha when we look at the seven, we know that this statement Q is false, and that puts us in these two situations. And that's why logically you have to flip the card, because maybe it's true it's true that there's a vowel on the other, which case the whole statement is false, or maybe there isn't a vowel on the other, in which case the statement is true. It's because when the Q is uh, false, there isn't an even on one side, then you don't know which case it is, and you have to flip to look at the value of P, whether or not there's a vowel on the other side. 
Okay, and there's one more way that I can give some explanation as to why you have to check these cards from a very purely logical standpoint. What we could do is take the given statement, if p then q, and write its negation. And we could take the equivalent contrapositive and write its equivalent negation, right? So here's the given statement, if p then q. This is the negation, p and not q and written in words in this particular situation, we could be just checking the negation of the statement to see whether the negation was true or false. So the negation, um, there's a vowel on one side and not an even on the other. And of course, this is the contrapositive, which I have there. And if you form the negation of this guy, you have not Q and P. Of course, these are exactly the same. So these statements are precisely the same logically. And all I'm really doing is just checking to see if there's a vowel on one side and not an even on the other. And so going through that list, I'm just checking for if there's a vowel on one side and not an even on the other. And of course, we're assuming from the outset in the entire situation here that these cards are on one side a letter and on the other side a number. And so that is a that is a given that we don't have to, we are not questioning here. One side has a letter and one side has a number. So as you go through, um, this one you do have to, to flip because there's a vowel on one side and you have to make sure that it's true that there's not an even on the other. We have to check whether that or not that's true. Um, you don't have to check this because it's not a vowel. You don't have to check this one because all we're looking for is if there's not an even on one side. And this is an even, so it's irrelevant, logically speaking. And then um, you do have to check, of course, the seven because you're looking for situations where you have not an even on one side, but then a vowel on the other. And so you can sort of see it's, yeah, checking to see whether or not these negations are true is logically the same thing as checking whether the original statement is true. And so that's just another way of looking at it. But how complex and uh you know, uh, abstract is all of the logical reasoning behind something that was really super intuitive and really easy in a different context back in that situation. So what is it? How interesting how the human mind works that we can go right through that immediately looking at that. And isn't this actually even more abstract? I mean, they're not even really people. They're just images of so supposed cards that represent people. I mean, that seems even more abstract, but it's, so it isn't quite the level of, of abstraction precisely. I don't think that that makes the difference here. Um, I think it's something about the context and the way that the human mind works. When we think we're so logical, it may be just in the right context we're logical, but in other contexts, uh, we're not maybe as, as logical as we might think, right? So you could probably go through that pretty quickly and easily say, yeah, you got to check the other side to find out the age because that's an alcoholic beverage. You really don't care because this is a soda and doesn't matter what age they are. And this is uh, of age, but you really don't care what they're drinking. All you're checking is whether or not that's true. If they're drinking alcohol, then they're legal age. You're not checking. If they're of legal drinking age, then they're drinking an alcoholic beverage. That doesn't really matter to confirm this statement. And of course, you do have to check this because clearly underage, um, you'd have to see what they're drinking in order to confirm whether or not that's true. So just fascinating uh, how the same logical problem is really challenging to think precisely in one context and absolutely trivial in another. And I just think that's a fascinating thing, uh, both in logic and in human psychology.